Hey, hey artists, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be creating a painting of one of my favorite animals, a barn owl. And if you've watched any of my videos before, you're going to know how obsessed I am with them. So I'm going to be creating this oil painting of a barn owl, but I want to be talking about something that I know I've definitely experienced before when it comes to my art practice and maybe you have too so I just want to talk about that and basically it's what we do when our art practice is a struggle whether this be a dry creative spell or maybe you're just in a funk and nothing seems to turn out right but yeah sometimes the art process is a struggle and this doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, none of your paintings are turning out how you want them to or anything to do with that. Sometimes you can't really get yourself in the right headspace to even enjoy artwork and you know you should be doing it, especially if, you know, it's part of your job. If you are, you know, an artist that actually successfully sells art to people that want to buy art, you kind of need to create it. And, you know, I'm sure at some point in time you have experienced the art practice being a struggle. I personally have experienced this big time when I was going through emotional trauma. Art was such a hard activity to do during that time. But you also don't have to be going through a huge life change in order to feel a little stuck in your art practice sometimes. It happens to all of us. And if it hasn't yet, it probably will. So kind of why I want to talk about this. This is something that we can probably all relate to, but it can be a little helpful to have a bit of guidance when you're, you know, in the thick of things and you want to be able to release the hold that that struggle has on you and enjoy the process instead. So there's a couple of things that I always rely on when I inevitably hit you know, that struggling phase, whether it be from, you know, life getting me down or, you know, getting a little too stuck in my head, letting that comparisonitis, you know, take hold, whatever is happening that's leading to my art practice being a struggle. I have a couple of things that I usually like to fall back on. And the first one is to really set the stage for success. And what I mean for, by this is basically priming my environment to make art more fun and actually make it more enjoyable. So for me, this is usually putting something on in the background, whether this be, you know, a really good show that I love. We've all got those shows or movies that we put on in the background that just feel like having a friend there with you, even though we've seen them about a thousand times. Brooklyn Nine-Nine for me, for sure. Or even putting a really captivating podcast on, your favorite music, an audiobook. It all depends on your mood. There's definitely some moods where you want to be able to, you know, just kind of flow away into the moment and have something that's not going to really impede on, you know, those creative thoughts popping up. And other times you want to have a really solid distraction. So that's where having a really engaging, you know, show or podcast or audiobook can be really powerful. But I always like to have some sort of audio addition to my environment, um, mostly to keep my brain from becoming too overactive. And then there's a couple other things that I usually do to set the environment too. You can light a candle or use you know, an essential oil diffuser. Scent is a really big thing for me. So having something, you know, that kind of puts me in that headspace is really powerful. And then I always make sure that I have something delicious to drink near me at all times. And, you know, if you're painting with oils like I do, make sure you keep it away from your paint. Um, there's that, you know, old kind of joke for artists where, you know, how many times have you dipped your paintbrush in your coffee cup? Well, with oil painting, it's a little more harmful. So make sure you keep it away. But I always make sure that I have something delicious to sip on. And, you know, even sometimes have a, a couple. You can have some snacks. Either way, the bottom line here is actually take the time to prime your environment to make that art experience more fun. And this is going to do wonders for actually helping you to break out of that struggling phase. So once my environment is all primed, you know, feeling good or better, <laughs> 
The next thing I always do is I actually set aside a time for that art play and that art experience. I personally like to put myself on a timer and the reason why is because I know that I've got, you know, an uninterrupted period of time where I am just allowed to enjoy and experience the art practice where I don't have to keep checking my phone or my clock to make sure I'm not, you know, there's somewhere to be. I set myself a timer so that I can forget about time and I know that I will have that little reminder when time is up and you can keep going but it's just nice to be able to have that period of time that you've dedicated towards your art and you know tell your family or the people you live with that this is your art time and to go do something else for a while and leave you be. I always love doing this when I need to get back into my art practice and kind of release that struggling aspect a little bit. So sometimes the reason why you might be struggling with your art practice and not really enjoying it as much is because of a mental game that is just so, so easy to play. And sometimes we do actually get caught up in that whole comparisonitis thing where you look at the artwork that you, you know, an artist you idolize is creating. And rather than feeling inspired, your mind can be, oh, well, you're never going to be as good as them. So why even try? Which is a very cruel thing for our minds to tell us at times. But it's, you know, I'm sure we've all experienced this at some point. So the next sort of step that I take when I want to release that struggle and really start to enjoy and embrace the art practice again, is to remind yourself that everyone starts somewhere, and we're all playing the same game. So if you are looking up at an artist you admire, and rather than feeling that inspiration that's going to fuel you to create something, you've got that nasty mind, or you've got that nasty voice in your head that's, you know, telling you why should you even try, remind yourself that everyone is sitting where you are sitting at some point in time. That artist that you look up to, they probably felt that exact same thing to another artist that they looked up to. And, you know, they pushed past it. They thanked those nasty little voices in our head for just basically wanting to protect us. And they stepped past it and they embraced art instead. So just remind yourself, everyone starts somewhere. And ultimately, we are all playing that same game. And then the last thing that I wanted to share with you, because this is one of this last step here is actually one of the ones that makes the most most difference for me personally, when I'm struggling with art and the art practice is I remind myself that art can and should be fun. So let it be fun. Remove expectations that you have on yourself to create your next masterpiece or make everything look perfect. Sometimes we forget the fact that, you know, why we started creating art in the first place. We started creating because it brought us joy, because it was fun, because it gave us an opportunity to create something beautiful. And it can be, you know, really easy to lose track of that at some point. So one of my favorite techniques for releasing that struggle and stepping back into a harmonious art practice is just that, reminding myself that art can and should be fun and to remove any expectations that I have on myself. And sometimes when I'm really stuck in that phase, the best thing that I can do is actually to create a piece of artwork for the purpose of breaking out of that struggle. So I set that expectation for myself to basically release my expectations and I create a piece of artwork where I'm not trying to create something that I'm going to sell. I'm not creating something that is going to be my next breakout piece. I'm definitely not working on something like a commission that is going to be for a client. I am stepping into it with the pure sake of creating and enjoying that process. And it is one of the most powerful ways that you can actually step out of that struggle and step into a more happy and harmonious art practice. So that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope that this, you know, had some impact on you and maybe next time you find yourself struggling a little bit too, you'll be able to embrace these things and enjoy the art practice again. 
Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. If you're craving more help with painting realistic wildlife easily, then you will love the Wildlife Painting Academy. Each month, new masterclasses are added, complete with my voice walking you through every moment, paint mixing recipes, reference photos, and so much more. You can check it out in the link in the description of this video.